Here we go. There are many dreams that have come true when the announcement came through. He's back! Kai Soto's back at the Sixers. Get hype. The fan MVP coming back to defend his title. Oh, what a dream. Bring it on, Kai Soto, back in the NBL. So how much do you love it? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's all great material for us, isn't it? Um. <laughs> so there's been about six Honestly. different variations of the question of what does Matt think, uh, including one... Uh, <laughs> Does Matt believe that, uh, first, there's another one, uh, Darren is sent through on ClutchRadio.com. Um, what are the odds for Kai Soto going back-to-back as fan MVP? Uh, another oh, one... Uh, odds on. Odds on. <laughs> uh, It'll be 1.01. <laughs> uh, Jezza, Jezza has sent through also via ClutchRadio.com. Uh, how long before the first triple-double game uh, for Kai Soto? Um, and- that's, that's, a, that's easy. I can answer that. He's going to have a triple double against uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder, <laughs> and and they're, and they're all going to say, "See, I told you so." He's better than Chet Holmgren, you know, the, the fellow crazies. But um, I jest, by the way, in case I know they're listening. Um, uh, no, I don't really believe that. That's a joke. But anyway, will Kai Soto win the MVP in MVL twenty three from Jacob? <laughs> by the length of the straight, kidding, kidding. The aggregators don't aggregate me, as Bill Simmons is fond of saying, but um, will he win the MVP? Uh, no. Here's the thing when it comes to Soto, and I know he was contracted back, but I, if there was, if you're in a position with the Adelaide 36ers and you've made the two big signings already, and I know that um, Xavier Mumford has not panned out, but they're still looking for another import guard, looking at another local big as well. But this is a team with Antonius Cleveland in and Robert Franks in, that are a genuine chance of doing some real damage this season. I look at it as if you could yeah. have cut Kai Soto loose, cut him loose because you do not need that external noise that is going to be coming all in on the 36ers again this season for a team that could contend for honours in the back end of the year. Now, I know Soto can do some nice things offensively, but is he worth the external noise that comes with him? No, not at the moment. So... I, that was my thought going in, is that if you're Adelaide, do you really want what comes with Kai Soto, particularly after the whole NBA draft fiasco? Yeah. If it was me, I wouldn't have brought him back. I yeah, found a way look, to get I don't him. know. I don't know. Look, you know what? Look, look, I'll be serious about this I, with Soto. Um, he did flash in the NBA last season, and I'd be a fool to say otherwise. There were games, particularly offensively, you know, we talked about his defense long enough. Uh, where he showed that, that he's got some skills that, that he can be effective at this level. Um, I'd, I'd just like to see him build up his body a lot more, and hopefully he does that this season. Look, at the end of the day, CJ is a, a fan. You know, I think CJ really supports the kid, and um, I think he was a, he was protecting him a little bit last season until such time as he had to un- unleash him, as it were, because of the injuries to uh, Bairstow and, and Humphreys. And, uh, obviously, with uh, Humphreys gone now, that, that potentially opens up a spot. They have talked about the need for uh, a wing player to kind of fill out the spot or a guard to go alongside Mitch McCarron. And I think Mitch spoke about that in his uh, Huddle podcast with our, our good friend Liam Santa Maria, that, that they're probably going to get a guy as the third import who's going to be a ball handler to go alongside Mitch because you can never have too many guys on the court at once. Um, handling the ball, so that'll be interesting. So, on the face of it, uh, that should open up um, opportunities, i.e., minutes for Soto. Um, and look, is he going to be a dominant figure? Is he going to be impactful? Probably not. Um, I hope he improves. I, I, I hope for Adelaide's sake, he's going to have to. Um, it, it, it's going to be interesting to see. You know, you, you, you sort of look at him and you go, well, you know. The NBA draft was a debacle, and I've said that from day one. I, I still can't believe they didn't pull him out. I just thought that was just ludicrous, you know. And, and um, you know, but yeah, you, you sort of mentioned, is it worth it? Look, it's all external noise. I mean, if, if Adelaide are strong enough as a squad internally, you just wipe out the external noise. Yeah, I mean, we, it, it's fodder for us, the, all the social media stuff and all the YouTube stuff and, and me being the number one critic of Kai Soto. I'm still, you talk about you not, not being 
uh, welcome in Brisbane. At least your life's not being threatened if I, if I went to Manila. So, you know, you can take that as red. Um, but um, it's a fun story that he's back. Uh, uh, I, I don't wish him any ill will, obviously. Um, and, and you know, uh, is, is this the way for him to get to the NBA? Look, if he if he flashes, if he improves his body, if he improves defensively, particularly on the perimeter, if he shows something where he can actually guard the pick and roll, um, if he shows better mobility, particularly laterally, uh, we know he can shoot the ball. We know he's got a, a, a decent enough touch inside. Um, he's got some talent, but... You know, is it NBA level talent? No, not. He's and not, I've said that. Not, not yet. Man. Not yet. He's got so much work to do, obviously. So hopefully he can get it done for, for 36 of fans' sake and, and for our friends in the Philippines. Look, I think he's got the. T- he could end up in Europe. He could end up with a massive deal in, in China. I don't think he's going to the NBA. But no, I don't think so. I don't see it. I really hope for the kids' sake that he does progress this season and he does become that guy that. He's been touted as it is, or, or somewhere close to that. Or, you, you, honestly, I hope he becomes someone valuable for the 36ers in their push towards playoffs. Yeah, put That's... it this way. He's going to develop a hell of a lot more in the NBL than he ever would in the PBA. <laughs> Let's just take that as take that as red. You know, he, he's, he's in a situation in a, a world-class league that sent, by the way, three guys from this league were drafted. Yeah. Three guys. That's um, amazing. Yeah. And he wasn't one of them, which we always said was the case. And I, I still maintain it, it's it's a what could have been scenario for him. Because I think, especially now that we know that, that Humphreys is gone, on the face of it, he should get a lot more opportunities to shine. Uh, and had he stayed out of this draft, because he would have been eligible for the next year's draft, he would have had a much better opportunity to be drafted anyway. I've, I've gone over that. That's that's gone. But he still would have an opportunity to impress NBA teams. Because you mentioned before at the top, Julian, because we've got this condensed schedule, there are going to be teams uh, that, you know, are going to be looking at a lot of these players for the stretch run. There's going to be a lot of eyes on the NBL again, purely because of Aaron Baines. Because yeah. there's going to be teams looking at him going, you know, if he's going to be at, at if we're making a push to the playoffs, we need a big. That's a that's a proven big. Those same eyeballs are going to be looking at Kai Soto as well. Um, so if he improves, you know, at, albeit he's going to need to improve dramatically to be that kind of level. Uh, who knows? But um, yeah, I mean, really, it's this is all going to be just fodder for us at the end of the day, and. Uh, I can't wait to see uh, what the uh, good friends, all, all those content creators in the Philippines come up with this time. 